Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Future Midwife. Today I have a plan to take an important topic among high risk pregnancy that is pregnancy induced hypertension. I hope this topic will be useful for the nursing students as well as the staff nurses those are working in the maternity side. So let's start our today's topic pregnancy induced hypertension. Let's see about pregnancy induced hypertension. If I say the another word of pregnancy induced hypertension you will understand very easily that is gestational hypertension. The word gestation denote pregnancy. Hypertension denote increased blood pressure. So this kind of hypertension which occurs only during pregnancy usually it occurs after 20th weeks of gestation and also here the blood pressure will be more than 140 by 90 mm hg so i think you understood what you mean by gestational hypertension to be precise this kind of hypertension it occurs only during pregnancy usually after 20th weeks of gestation and also the BP will be more than 140 by 90 mm Hg. Let's see the causes of pregnancy induced hypertension. The exact cause of pregnancy induced hypertension is unknown. In some cases or some women there is endothelial dysfunction and intense vasospasm can be lead to hypertension. That means in case of any clot or obstruction in the tunica intima of the blood vessels which can obstruct the blood flow. If there is any obstruction or any intense vasospasm inside the blood vessel which can lead to decreased flow to our brain, liver, kidney, uterus even in the placenta during pregnancy. So this can adversely affect the growing fetus inside the uterus. Apart from that, there are few predisposing factors also can be lead to pregnancy induced hypertension. These are pre-existing hypertension, kidney disease, diabetes, mother's age more than 40 or less than 20, any previous history of pregnancy induced hypertension and multiple pregnancy. Here we discuss about the classification of pregnancy induced hypertension. These are gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, chronic hypertension, preeclampsia or eclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. First we will discuss about gestational hypertension. In case of gestational hypertension, the blood pressure should be more than or equal to 140 by 90 mm Hg on two or more occasion. And also it should occur in a previously normotensive patient. Usually it occurs after 20 weeks of gestation without proteinuria. It can return to normal 12 weeks after the delivery. Almost half of these can develop preeclampsia symptoms in the future. To be precise, this kind of hypertension will occur only during pregnancy. And before the pregnancy, the mother is not having any history of hypertension disorder. And also here the BP will be more than 140 by 90 mm Hg. Usually it develop after 20th weeks of gestation. In this category, we don't have any protein urea. Next category is chronic hypertension. In this category, mother is already having hypertension before pregnancy. It is continuing after pregnancy. And also here the BP will be more than or equal to 140 by 90. In case of chronic hypertension, the mother can develop proteinuria or sometimes it cannot develop proteinuria. Next we will see what you mean by preeclampsia. It is a multi-system disorder of unknown etiology characterized by development of hypertension to the extent of 140 by 90 mm of Hg or more with protein urea after the 20th weeks in a previously normotensive and non-protein uric woman which is called preeclampsia. Next is 
eclampsia. Here the preeclampsia is associated with a seizure is called eclampsia. The last one is superimposed preeclampsia or eclampsia on chronic hypertension. Here there are two categories. The first one is new onset proteinuria more than or equal to 300 mg in 24 hours in hypertensive woman but no proteinuria before 20 weeks of gestation. The another category is a sudden increase in proteinuria or blood pressure or otherwise platelet count will be less than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter in woman with the hypertension and proteinuria before 20 weeks of gestation. These are the two categories in case of superimposed preeclampsia or eclampsia on chronic hypertension. Here I would like to explain about HELP syndrome before moving to preeclampsia in details. Usually 4 to 12 percentage of patients with a severe preeclampsia and eclampsia can develop this HELP syndrome. So here there will be high BP along with that hemolysis also can occurs apart from that elevated liver enzyme also can be occurs and also there will be a low platelet count. So there is hemolysis increased liver enzyme and low platelet count means we can suspect it is a HELP syndrome. If there is any symptom of HELP we have to stabilize the cardiovascular symptoms and also we need to correct the coagulation abnormality and we need to go for the delivery. If the platelet is less than 20,000 we can transfuse platelet. If the gestational weeks is less than 32 the steroid therapy may help to stabilize the maternal platelet count. So we will move on to preeclampsia a little bit detail. So preeclampsia means here the mother is already having gestational hypertension along with that there is protein urea. So here gestational hypertension along with the protein urea we consider it as preeclampsia. On the base of severity we can categorize the preeclampsia into three mild preeclampsia moderate preeclampsia and severe preeclampsia. In case of mild to moderate preeclampsia, the systolic blood pressure will be 140 to 160 mm Hg. The diastolic BP will be 90 to 100 mm Hg. Here there will be proteinuria that is 2 plus. In case of severe preeclampsia, the systolic BP will be more than 160 mm Hg. The diastolic BP will be also more than 110 mm Hg. Here the proteinuria will be 3 plus or more. Along with that epigastric pain also can be expected. Here I will explain about the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia. First we will see the signs. Abnormal weight gain, rise in BP edema over angles and placental insufficiency such as candy liquor. Let's see about the symptoms. It can be categorized into mild symptoms and alarming symptoms. First see the mild symptoms. So in the signs I already explained there will be a swelling over the angle. This swelling usually occurs in the early morning once the mother get up from the bed and also mother feel tightness of ring on the finger. This swelling may extend to face, abdominal wall, vulva and whole body. So let's see the alarming symptoms. These are headache, disturbed sleep, diminished urine output, epigastric pain and blurred vision. Here we discuss about the main investigations which can be done in case of preeclampsia. So obviously there will be a frequent BP monitoring. Then the urine test for protein. Ophthalmic scopic examination in order to find out the retinal edema and constriction of arterioles. In case of blood test we need to do the serum uric acid level and also serum creatinine level. It is very important to check the serum uric acid and serum creatinine. The serum uric acid level is more than 4.5 mg per dl. Also the serum creatinine level is more than 1 mg per dl. We should be very cautious. 
Now I will explain about the management of preeclampsia. So here prevention is better than cure. So we will see what all are the preventive aspect of preeclampsia. The first one is regular antenatal checkup. Next one is low dose of aspirin 60 mg daily. Calcium supplementation 2 mg per day. Antioxidant like vitamin E and C also will be helpful to prevent the preeclampsia. In case of severe hypertensive disorder, we never try to conduct the labor at home. So we should admit the mother in a well-equipped hospital. Apart from that, she should take a proper rest. It also increases the renal blood flow, uterine blood flow and reduce the blood pressure. In case of diet, should contain protein 100 grams. Salt restriction. Calorie intake is 1600 calorie per day. In some case, doctors suggest sedative like phenobarbitone and dicepa. Antihypertensive medication is very important to control the BP. Usually, we prefer methyl dopa or labitalol. So, these are the main management of preeclampsia during pregnancy. Here, we reach the complications of preeclampsia. So, here we have a maternal complication and fetal complication. First, we will see immediate maternal complication. During pregnancy, there will be eclampsia, hemorrhage, oliguria, diminished in vision and preterm labor. During labor, eclampsia and PPH. During piperium, we can expect eclampsia, shock and sepsis. Once it comes to the fetal complication, we can expect IUD, asphyxia, prematurity and IUGR. Here we can wind up our today's section. So next class will be the continuation of today's episode. In the next class, I will take eclampsia in detail. So till that, take care. Bye bye.